class. Welcome back to week one, lesson 1 1.2 now. I hope you had a good time last week getting oriented in Blackboard. I'm sorry, earlier this week, getting oriented in Blackboard. You got through the course logistics okay. Um, you've looked over the syllabus. And you had fun making your introductory um, slide set of yourselves and had a chance to ex explore everyone else's. And I really do encourage you to look at everyone else's introduction slide set because even though you're sitting here by yourself in front of a computer screen somewhere, um, we're all here as a class. One of the other instructors in MCAD like to say that we're all in the same classroom, but that classroom is very, very big. So we're all in this together, and so I really encourage you to look at each other's um, introductions. Okay, so now finally, lesson 1.2, we get to dive into um, introduction to biomimetic design and ask the first question, what is biomimetic design? Well, let's just start with the most simple definition of biomimetic design. The bio part of biomimetic refers to life or living things, just like in the word biology. And the mimetic part comes from the word mimic, which is to copy, or what we like really to say is to emulate, because we're not strictly copying. And then all of you know that design stands for plan, um, whether it's a verb or a noun. So biomimetic design is creating designs based on emulating living things. So that's kind of a simple, straightforward definition of biomimetic design. Now, if you kind of look at the wide world of biomimetic design, which we'll do in Lesson 1.3, um, what you'll find out there is that the goal of biomimetic design is to create designs that are more sustainable, more innovative, uh, more higher performing, and perhaps more beautiful, and do that by emulating living things. You can emulate shapes, materials, processes, or systems, and it's all about emulating functions to, um, to create whatever it is you want to create or um, get done, whatever it is you want to do with your design. So that's kind of what you would you would imagine the goal of biomedic design to be, and that's what you'll see um, when you start to explore this field. And this is probably your goal in, in taking this course. Biomedic design, it's also important to understand what it's not about. It's not about designing things that just look like nature, which is called biomorphism, you know, morph referring to shape. Now, there's nothing wrong with biomorphism. It's, it's, you can create beautiful things that look like nature, but we wouldn't call that biomimetic design. Similarly, biomimetic design is not about making things from natural materials. So if you have flooring made of cork or uh, cabinets made of bamboo, that may be sustainable, renewable, all kinds of wonderful things, but that's not biomimetic design. We call that bioutilization. It's also not about using organisms in a natural process, so making yogurt or, or beer or some other kind of, um, or even using algae to uh, make biofuels. That may be, again, sustainable design, renewable design, but that would not be considered biomimetic design. Now, Many of you are in the Sustainable Design Program, and um, many of you who are not in the program are taking this course because you're interested in sustainable design. So let's talk about biomimetic design in the context of sustainable design. And to do that, what I'd like to consider or ask ourselves, you know, if you're talking about sustainable design, what are we really aiming for when we do or talk about sustainable design? Okay, certainly we're not trying to do unsustainable design, right? So we're, we're moving away from unsustainable design somehow. But again, that doesn't really tell you what you're aiming for. In the world of architectural design, which is some of you might be interested in, we have things like Energy Star, Healthy Buildings, LEED Certified, Net Zero, the Carbon or Energy, Regenerative Design, Living Building Challenge, and all those are becoming moving away from unsustainable design towards more sustainable design, but still they don't quite tell you what you're aiming for. And I would argue, um, and you're welcome to argue back, that sustainable design is really about aiming for supporting life on Earth, right? 
the whole idea of sustainable is not just so that the thing itself sustains, but so we all are sustainable. Humans, the things we design, and life itself on Earth. But, you know, all these things are moving in that direction, but I think all of us would argue or, or um, we sort of understand that many of these are really about doing less bad, right? Like regenerative and living building are still aiming beyond doing less bad, but that's still sort of where sustainable design is. And that's really where biomimetic design, at least what we're going to talk about in this class, is really aiming for. That gap, bridging the gap between what we know to be sustainable design, which is doing less bad or being neutral, to actually designing for life on Earth. So I would argue Sorry, I don't mean to be so argumentative, but <laughs> I'm just trying to set a tone here that biomimetic design could be or should be have, have the bigger goal of realigning ourselves with nature, our materials, our processes, our systems, and our very spirits so that all of us, and here's you with your spirit burning inside you, are realigned with nature and all the lovely critters that we share the earth with. So in this course, we're going to talk about ha making things that are more sustainable, more innovative, um, higher performing, more beautiful, but also the ultimate goal of realigning ourselves and our designs with nature. So biomimetic design has to do with where you look for inspiration. Of course, we look to nature. Um, what you design, how you design, there's a biomimetic design process why you design and who you're designing for. In the rest of the lesson 1.2, you're going to start exploring examples of um, what we mean by a biomimetic design. And you'll find them in the, um, under the terms of biomimicry, biomimetics, structural biomaterials, um, and also um, biomimicry applied to business. So you'll read an article, um, by Tom McKeague. Some of you may have run him, into him before. He's fantastic. He's um, he's one of the original um, movers and shakers in biomimicry. Um, articles, there's some in the popular press. You'll read one from Natural, I'm sorry, National Geographic. Um, Julian Vincent is very much um, uh, on the engineering side, and you'll, he's written a book on structural biomaterials. You'll get a sense of what that world is like. Uh, the Beetle is um, from Swedish Biomimetics 3000, as you may have seen in my introduction. Um, it's a company I work for, very high tech development. You'll see what they think of as biomimetics. Um, and this is the article that has to do with um, what we can learn about um, from nature about business. And then in the little foot example here, you're going to do your first biomimetic design. Um, um, at the end of this uh, lesson, and we're going to do it, do it after watching a video on on feet in nature. Actually, some of you have already done biomimetic designs before in your other classes, but this is the first biomimetic design in this class. Now, when you do this first design, um, you don't need to do something that is actually, even though you're designing inspired by a foot, the result doesn't have to be foot oriented. It doesn't have to be anything to do with feet at all. So you can do something, but you don't necessarily have to do anything that, you know, functions like a foot. No furry animal slippers. Okay, that's biomorphism, remember. And we also don't want to copy something that's already been done. Like any, I don't want to see any gecko foot based designs out there, okay? Um, so um, have fun. You don't have to have any restrictions on reality in this particular one. Just go have fun, be inspired, um, and go to it. So you'll see that in your assignment 1.2. Okay, so you're off and running, and I will see you in the next video.